one of the things that disheartens me about any pastor that gets political like this is the almost total disregard to, or there's no examples of the way Jesus lived and did his ministry that are that can be given to support what he is saying. I'm not saying that everything he's saying is bad and that Christians shouldn't vote and that voting your conscience. I'm not saying that that is a thing that should be preached against. Yeah. However, I don't think he can G- use Jesus' life and ministry to support what he's saying because he doesn't use it. He uses Old Testament examples. Uh, he uses Romans 13 out of context and you know whether it's true or not different different conversation but what would be the most relevant passage in the new testament from jesus life to tell you how to vote as a christian for you for me it would i can't answer it the way you phrased it but it would be that jesus the context of jesus and the disciples and the fledgling church being under the boot of Rome, which was the total authority. They didn't get a say. There was no democracy there. Um, and there were no, there's no examples of Jesus trying to be a revolutionary to, to overtake Rome. Actually, and that's what I think Peter thought was going to happen. I think but is so- that the, is that equivalent though? That feels like that doesn't feel like an equivalent if you're vote if you're like legally voting in a constitutional republic. Yeah, so we we don't have we so don't it's have overtake. It's not a one to one, but Jesus was given chances to take over the state. Satan offered it to him. Like all the kingdoms of the world are yours. And Jesus it was one of the temptations. Jesus denied that. And I I think that's worth considering. I I, I think I see where you're going. I don't I don't know if an overthrow is the same as like a democratically elected official. But he, he didn't even try to change Roman policy. So in the Bible, when there are not one-to-one examples of Jesus' life, we can point to other examples in the Bible where God is showing uh, examples. <laughs> uh, so, you know, and that's that's where I thought it was interesting. That, that assumes sh- that God is that God is showing examples outside of human agency of writing and interpreting and editing scripture. At some point, if we can't agree on that, then maybe we can't talk about the Bible. Like, no, we have to have some. All we some, can do is some about. level. I mean, this reminds so, me. Of, so, this so, reminds me of Jubilee. We need to come to a common ground well, I, here. Yeah, I just mean like, <laughs> if you don't want to use the Bible, like, then we can't talk about Jesus. No, I want to use the Bible, and that's why I disagree with Mr. Howerton. Um, His use of the Bible is taking examples from Scripture and ramming them into our context, which I I think is probably upside down. I don't know if he rammed it. I think... Gently shoved it? I think there was... I think he rubbed his neighbor. (laughs) (laughs) I, I liked how he presented... Here are three examples of what leadership of different types of leaders in the Bible... Oh yeah, the Jezebel and the Je- Jehu was the other one. Yeah, and then the the Josiah was Just the good one, the righteous. And then there's this middle ground example too. Not perfect, but God used them. Probably wasn't saved. Probably burning in hell forever, but God still uses them. And I think that's probably the the. And I'm glad that he used that example because it it, it is closest to probably what we encounter every single day in in our typical political interactions, and. I think the point that he was trying to make there is it demonstrates an example in scripture where God is saying this is an imperfect leader that I can that there can still be uh the goodness that I want to a- happen in the world can still come from this type of leader. Yeah, I don't And if if you're holding out for the perfect leader, if that's oh, your, yeah. if that's your litmus test, if that's your your threshold no, then, no, then you will. Yeah. Then you should never vote. You will never be able to vote. And I don't disagree with that. And that is not what I am personally doing, except for Pat Robertson in the eighties, right, Jeff? <laughs> I abstain. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I mean, nowhere in the Bible does it call us to actually reinforce government. 
uh, in terms of voting. It just says, well, there's no follow, 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 you know, what your government, I mean, in layman's terms, follow what your government says. They tell you to do something, you need to do it, pay taxes, uh, whatever it might be. And that's my point. Nobody would, everybody, if they're guys in power, yeah, everyone agrees with that statement. But as soon as it's Hillary Clinton, from my my background, or if, when the Clintons are in power, we ignore those vo- those those uh, those passages. Wait, wait, I don't understand. What do you mean? Like if Hillary Clinton follow was, what your leaders say, it's like everyone agrees yeah. with that when the person they like is in, and right. they ignore it when the person they don't like is is in. Right, but that goes against God's laws. I mean, Hillary Clinton's a female; she can't be in power. Forget okay. That forget that that's bes- beside whatever that me. I guess great, Jeff. Bill was in too. What? <laughs> that was wait wrong. You guy. did part, Joe. <laughs> I guess Bill sounds like that now too. Yeah, he does. He sounds a little Bidenish. Uh, no, I I get I was it, never but on still, that airplane. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I was never on that airplane seventeen times. <laughs> Where do you stop Hitler's in power? God put him there. We going to go down that road? Great leader. Because that's what the Bible says. Right, right. But still, great leader. And we're going to look back 50 years and be like, what in the hell happened in the United States or in the world? Government. You should, okay, did you, you should define great, though. Yeah, let's... Uh, uh, great influ- you mean great is having the ability to have millions of people follow you in a very... Uh, I feel like you mean influential, a very okay. influential leader. Great leadership is the ability to get people to follow you. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, we're looking at... So is the, that definitionally good? We're looking at the lens. Did he, well, do, no. did great, he do great things? Uh, great doesn't equal good. He... We're saving... We're protecting you. N- n- I, I realize what, you, what you're getting at, but you said... I, I said he's a great leader. Great leaders have the ability... Not only do they have... You know, they, they're their rhetoric, their speeches, their their enthusiasm, they're driven and people follow. And when that happens, you're like, man, what a leader. So if you was go back he, was he a great Christ like leader? I, you know what? Probably back in the late thirties, people believed he he was. Back then. We people we, believe we're I'm, not ask, then. I'm asking you because you just said a couple things that people want would want a little clarification on. Do you want clarification? Hell I yes. do. <laughs> uh, so I do, I do believe that Adolf Hitler was an incredible leader in that he got people to follow a, and believe in a way that like in that moment was in, yeah, he's incredible. In, but he's influential for when, sure. When we look back, um, we and when any time we look back in history, the context has changed. Uh, the Bible never changes. The, the context has changed. It's, it was it, those were Christian ways to go out and wipe people out. Absolutely not. Um, also, a governing body. So we're kind of in. You know, now the governing body is going against God law. This God's is laws. my point: is nobody nobody follows that Romans thirteen. Everyone has a limit where they won't follow that, and they don't believe it. They just use it when it's convenient. And they should. They should not follow. If the Germans back then were using Romans 13, and I promise you some of them were. Sure. To follow the governing authorities. Fuck that. Get it out. Because it's not love God, love your neighbor. I know. I feel like we're missing context. That's why I was like, there's a couple words there. I'd, I would like to get a little more detail on what they mean by establish. What do you, what is meant by establish and what is meant by authority? It's weird that Josh Howerton didn't provide more biblical context. Uh, anyway, Shots I do. Fired. Anyway, so let's, let's bring it full circle back to the point that, that he had made earlier, which was, um, not, uh, not voting is dereliction of your duties effectively that you're in rebellion with God. And and what I do think happens more often than not is that Christians will choose to not vote because they'll say uh, the perfect candidate isn't it doesn't exist there therefore I cannot in good conscience vote for them yeah and that that is 
not a totally unfair straw man, but I think it's still a straw man. So I would flip it on you. Where, where's your line to where it's like you got? What if you have two supremely evil Jehu types in the Bible? You have to vote for the greater good. You have to. That should be your. That should be. Yeah. Why? I'll put it this way. Where's your line? Do you why, have a line where you're like, I can't you? vote for either of these? Um, b- because if you just just use logic, like one of these two will win. One of these is worse than the other. Right. Would I rather have the worst one or the 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 better one? However slight. Yeah. And I think your my argument is at a certain point. I'm not saying we're there now with these two candidates. I I understand. I want President Camacho. <laughs> all right, that's what I'm looking for, <laughs> and I'll hold out until Camacho. I can't. Shows up. I'm trying to look, at, look List, at my sad little chest, <laughs> listener. He's trying to flex his pecs right now. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, a la idiocracy. No, that that's that's the way that I, that I interpret that, and and the way that I read that is like, uh, if I hold out for the perfect candidate, I will be waiting forever, and and if I abdicate my responsibility as a voter, then effectively I'm I'm not helping move the line towards things that I think God is more interested in and supportive in that are closer to the ideals of Christianity. Yeah. My my problem I think with this stream of thought is that we're granting way too much power over our individual lives. We're like we're sort of like succumbing to like Hey, Do you want us to gonna, vote or not? Hey, should you vote? Never mind, it doesn't matter. What are you doing? You're subverting your own question. The the um the the problem is so this is where my anarcho Christian philosophy is going to come through. Um, and I I don't know which was the chicken or the egg. Like my whether it's like my political philosophy or it's the way my faith has developed, and it, it probably doesn't matter, but. Um, the state definitionally is something that is there to create and enforce laws through the power of the gun or the sword, live by the sword, die by the sword. So what, what we're doing is when we grant state power and in our context in America, once the state assumes some sort of power, power will be granted one direction or another. Like imagine that there is a, a midpoint. And it goes one direction or the other. One direction is towards the is closer towards a Christian biblical Judeo Christian belief system. Yeah, and and the other direction God bless is away your heart is away from. If only it. that was true. Well, I mean, at, at some point you have to make it has to go one way or the other, right? I mean, what the state the state's gonna empires are gonna empire. My point is like you, no, 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 no. But like you, you get, get your guy in. That you think is better. I'm just saying, it it has definitionally has to go one direction or the other. Nothing exists purely in the middle, balanced on a laser point, right? So, yeah. If your choice is, can I? It, will my vote help this move in one direction? My your vote will help it move in one direction. Which direction would you rather it move in? I think your vote will make you feel like it's moving in one direction or other. But uh, if I assume that's true. Your vote goes to the guy and say you get the guy or gal in that that is better, better than the other one. Moves towards a direction. Are they going to create new laws in whatever direction? Maybe. And is it possible that the power that they use to build in the future, somebody else gets that power? They get the one ring. This is where the analogy is perfect. You've given them the power already. You've set up a scenario where the other person that's directionally bad. So would you? Ra- so you would rather take the poison pill than than the chance of it never of it potentially happening somewhere down in the future. I would rather go the way, and maybe this is the poison pill. I don't know. I think I think Jesus took the poison pill, but I don't. Want, at least right now, like I don't want to. I don't want to take part in. So. Trump did less war than was before, but also he continued support for Saudi Arabia that was conducting a genocide on people. And then the other way is like, 
I saw I actually saw a tweet where George Bush or somebody tweeting for one of the Bushes was like, anybody want to apologize to me right about now? Which <laughs> which is kind of funny right. because of like how chaos chaotic it's gone. And then I saw one political commentator who's an anarchist I follow tweeted back. It's like, a million Iraq, dead Iraqi women and children might disagree. It's like, th- this is what happens with empire building. And this is what you're buying into in small ways. And that's why... I am not taking part. I might write somebody in. But regardless, we are buying into this idea that like we're giving power, we're like eliminating our individual agency. And I think that's a mistake. I think I think individual Christians so I get what you're saying. You may I get your point. What the argument against that is by you voting for the third party. It is effect. It can it can be interpreted effectively as a vote for towards the negative, t- towards the known negative. Yeah. So I should be, f- and that, that's wh- all things being equal. Yeah. Give yourself, give humanity the chance towards the possible positive rather than the known negative. Yeah, I I just I love the the idealism you're showing. The possible positive well, it, is an illusion currently well it's mostly well it's maybe it's not i'm already i'm already caveating (laughs) in the other direction things that okay i'll I'll just uh i'll say this on the count of three well i'll say who we're voting for ready (laughs) (laughs) no but uh are there fewer wars okay that feels like that's um by the way that's a that's a positive in my book that's a positive, right? The Trump, that's a positive for Trump in my book. Yeah. Was it, but, but again, like, so, so, excuse me. I've, I have set aside for myself the idea that, that I, I'm going to have the perfect candidate that I, and I'm, that I can't, I've got to try to look for more good, good than there is bad. Right. But surely there is a line where there is a line. And don't be, call me Shirley. Yes. Is that the line? Great airplane reference. I knew it. Where where is your line though? Um, There's a point where you you would not take part because it's violating your conscience too much. Uh, the type of people that are running, it well. So I don't know if I'm someone who would consider consider themselves like a one uh, one issue voter. I'm not a single I'm not a single issue voter. So at some point there, I will look at it and go, well, you've tipped the scales now in the wrong direction. Now you are now you're no longer a net positive. Whatever whatever the conglomeration of things are that that equal that in my personal opinion. Yeah. Then then that's the point where I'll make it. So it's hard for me to give you like a super clean answer, but I will say there there, there could come a point where I go, nope. But there is a reality that you can imagine and that's where you would I'm not going to do this. Not going to do what? Not going to vote for vote. anybody? Yeah. Vote for a president. The logical oh, for, a, for a major party. the logical part of me says there's no way <laughs> it's okay we're getting played off right now I know we are getting played <laughs> off it's because I forgot to delete the little outro our listeners won't hear this okay it's okay oh. right now the theme song is playing and it's hilarious oh, it's good. playing in our ears no, that's fine that's fine it'll be over enough so let's test our ability to focus I know I'm just gonna take my earphones off so um that's funny they might hear the headphones. <laughs> I think the likelihood that we would find a perfectly like matched uh, duo in terms of of that like which which direction are you sending us? So it, is so unlikely, right? But what you're admitting to, without admitting to it, is we're it's just little compromises. It's constant compromises. Oh, I'll admit to it right away. That's that's the whole point. If you if you the moment that you admit I can't find the perfect candidate, therefore I need to find someone who is closer to the ideals that I care about. Yeah. That openly admits that there has to be compromise. And I think that's the core of what Josh is saying in that point is yeah. if you're waiting for a no compromise uh candidate, you will wait to the grave. And I don't disagree with that. Um but I do disagree with in this in our context where we have the freedom, like voting or not voting is a freedom either way. And when he says you're 
abdicating your responsibility. Yeah. Actually, we'll probably skip the the clip, but there's another clip that I uh, pulled where he does say 30 million Christians in 2016 didn't vote. And they abdicated their responsibility in the last election. Um, I think that's disappointing. And... But the thing is, like, that's their free right to do. And, it's and my, he's... Of course. Of course it is. And he doesn't not, say it's not their free right. But they're they're abdicating their responsibility to God. And I don't which think your, there's which, any which biblical your, evidence for that. Um, there is no biblical reference for a constitutional or like a, a democratic republic in the Bible. It was King's... It was leaders. It was I. I, I suppose so, Rome had some sort so of the argument, thing going on. The argument that he but that makes, makes my case even more because G, there's no evidence of Jesus trying to get Christians to do that. Um, is there evidence of Christians in the Bible advocating for Christian values? I kind of like the no earphones right now. By the way, it feels nice. The government. Feel the nice. government. I mean, those in government are supposed to be fighting for christian values they're supposed to be i don't think that's true at all uh, okay so this is it's worth noting at this point that jesus and paul were jewish and the, they didn't stop being jewish right so um let's see everybody must submit they weren't christians <laughs> okay so the oh. <laughs> so the everyone must submit to the governing authorities it's in his name jesus christ <laughs> the there for those uh, who rebel against the authority is opposing God's institution. Okay, s- skip forward. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to evil. So rulers, they're a terror to evil. Those in gov- those are that are ruling government are a terror to evil. Uh, would you like to have no fear of those uh, in authority? Do what is good, and you will pr- you will receive praise from him because. He is God's servant for your benefit. Those in government are God's servant for your benefit. So if we're following the government, the expectation is that they are servants of God. This is demonstrably untrue. Pick any murderous dictator. We already talked about Hitler. Pick Genghis Khan. There's you don't even have to. You can go in the Bible. There's plenty of terrible rulers. Correct. And if you then go Herod. farther, if if it goes against God's law, you are not to follow that government. I mean, that's a caveat you're adding. That that's within the Bible. It literally says. I, I don't disagree with that concept at all. Um, but my beef with the Romans thirteen is we we use that when it's convenient. It's like people like, oh, what what about the Constitution? Nobody cares about the Constitution. They only care when it's convenient for their specific needs. Um, and that's the thing. It's like that, that, and maybe it goes back to what you view the Bible is. Like, I, for me, it's like, oh, it says it in the Bible. Therefore, it's equally authoritative as anything else in the Bible. It's like, no, we got to talk about the individual context. So if Paul does mean God put that ruler there, you follow them case closed i disagree with paul and so maybe that's that's my heresy slash but i I think it demonstrably paul disagreed with the government based on his life so there's something missing here and there's something lost in translation a little more context that would be helpful which is why i kept coming back to like i would like i don't think we established i don't know if we have access to that context too which is wild because because again there's no shortage of terrible examples of leaders in the Bible. And they don't, they're not portrayed as okay to follow. Right. They're portrayed as right. bad dudes. Right. So, I'm it's not, a bad I, dude, I, man. It's a bad dude, man. It's clearly, uh, God isn't ignorant of the, those facts and the authors in the Bible aren't ignorant of those facts. It's, it's obvious. So, but, but I, I want to come back to my point that I, or my question that I asked earlier, which is, um, advocating advocating for positions of righteousness, advocating for goodness, and I think that that is that we're commonly like it's it's not hard for us to search for that in the Bible. That 
that no. we're called to advocate for 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 goodness. And I don't think it's a stretch to say that choosing to vote for the candidate that you think is more more closely, even if it's by hair, more closely aligned with advocating for righteousness yeah. and goodness in the world is a way that you can, by second hand, advocate for righteousness. And I, I don't disagree with that. It's just where I'm at currently is I've yeah. reached my limit to where I, I'm willing to take part in a way that violates my conscience. So I know everyone has their line and I, my big disagreement is, is calling anybody that doesn't vote because what he's saying is vote for my guy. He, in the, th- the bullshit part of his sermon, well, it's not even a sermon. I'm with you. I, I didn't disagree with, I, I agreed with a lot of it um, in theory, but when they say, he says, I, I'm not here to endorse a candidate. It's bullshit. He is. He's not going to say vote for Trump, but that's what he's saying, voting for Trump. It's like he's talking to toddlers. And also, I don't think by law he can endorse a candidate on no. a Sunday. I think he no. probably ha- he has to I think there's a violation vague. of your 501c3 status if you end up doing that. There's something in there. So which- it's t- that part of it is total horseshit, and everyone knows it. Um, even if voting for his guy is the right thing to do, which obviously you can tell I don't think it is, but I, I'm not going to hold it against people that do. Okay. Okay. I'm done caveating. But, but every election season, I have friends that are like, I don't care who you vote for. It's your right. You must vote. It's like, but you kind of do. <clears throat> what if I vote for the wrong person? What if I vote for the person you hate? <laughs> not you. I'm just saying this person and people that are very real in my social media life. It's like, just vote. It's your right. Um, nobody thinks that. So I think I've just grown weary enough of those well, contradictions to where I'm like, maybe you don't think that I think that maybe not nobody, the, the idea of voting as an American citizen, I think it's important that everybody votes. Like everybody have some skin in the game. So there's some debate uh, of, or you're just, you're like, I I'm, this is my person and this is why, as opposed to, I'm um, just, you know, uh, this whole system, uh, you know, I'm cynical about it and it just, it doesn't function. It's like, okay, well, you know, a part of the process is, is voting is to be involved is to get in involved in, you know, the, the yeah. systems that you're part of. Like I'm, you the know, difference it, is it's not a biblical process. It's a process. Yeah. It is Does a it governing have, authority. It's not wrong in nature, but the, the, I think the difference is some Christian leaders are using the Bible to make it seem like a biblical process. Wait, 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 wait. I think you're overreaching there a little bit. It's your biblical duty to vote is basically what he's getting into. If you're not voting, you're in, you're in passive rebellion against God. If, yeah, but I think that he's talking, like, like I said earlier, just because it doesn't spell, are, are you, you're not hung up on the idea that just because it doesn't spell this out specifically in the Bible that you shouldn't advocate for leaders who support righteousness. There's plenty of no. like non-direct examples. No, of that and in I can Bible, think right? of plenty of people I would want to be leaders in this country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, who I would vote for. Right. Um, but making a mandate and saying, hey, if you're a Christian, be careful. You're rebelling against God if you don't take part in the bullshit two-party system that all of us would agree the two-party thing is kind of rigged and a joke. But yet every four years, we all like... Yeah, but this time we really gotta, we just gotta do it. So I, I look, yes, every four years, do we all have to look at this and go, here's the sandwich that's in front of us? You gotta hold your nose. Here's the sandwich that's in front of us that we, we all get to take a bite out of. Yeah. But that's where I thought his interesting point was if you're waiting for the perfect candidate, you'll wait until you're dead. Yeah. And so, how are you trying to move the ball forward in a way that is closer to the things that, you think God, which is, is a reasonable in. stream of thought, and I like and I, I appreciate it. And so I'm if, just saying, if you, that is your th- if the that best is your- way, the best way forward might be to wait until you're dead. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, no, because then th- that's his point is that you you are actively not helping move things forward, and so by default you're helping them move backwards. Well, to him, to him, everything is moving backwards. We're just slowing it down. Which I thought was interesting. Which is a point I disagree. I I don't know how that lines up with the kingdom of God expanding like a mustard seed. I feel like that's a contradiction for most Christians is like the world is always going to get bad. That's the only way it's going to go until Christ comes back. 
And he, he, that's kind of where uh, he's at. Well, there, Revelation has some of that in there too. Like, yeah, you know, and I, I just think that it's it's a shitty interpretation, and I think it's a contradiction of Jesus saying the kingdom of God expands. And I think there's evidence of the kingdom of God expanding. This is good news, by the way. The kingdom of God expanding, the more people become disciples of Christ and actually live into the love God, love your enemy, love your neighbor, that's the kingdom of God expanding. The world will get better and it can get better. And it ties into the correct, in my view, interpretation of Revelation is a renewed heavens and earth, not a different heavens and earth. I like that too, but it it can get worse before it gets better. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But so far, it's like a stock market. It's like, there's a lot of downs and a lot of ups. We might be in a down period, but overall for like general well-being of more and more people, you can make an argument that things have been, are, are better generally, just on various metrics. See Steven Pinker and people like him, which there's holes in that too, but whatever. Different conversation. There's holes in Steven Pinker? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. <laughs> 